Hello, welcome everybody. This is Vanel with Vanel Med Pulse. I am excited to have you here on this channel where I share information about uh, healthcare related topics, nursing and respiratory care. If that's something you are interested in and you are in the right place, welcome. Let's get to it. First thing first, safety. So it is important to make sure that the scene is safe. So guys, listen. If you seen someone uh, on the ground, someone unresponsive, whether it was a witness by you or you just happened to uh, spot that person on the ground, you have to make sure that the scene is safe. It can be as simple as a few seconds of just scanning the area. Just do a quick general survey. So, for instance, let's say someone was hit by a, a car, was struck by a car in a car accident, and then you notice that person is unresponsive. So, before you jump into uh, help you make sure that the, it's safe for you to not only cross the road but to also to make sure the cars are gonna cut on fire so it's important to make sure that the scene is safe I cannot go uh, I cannot emphasize uh, on this uh, uh, enough because a lot of people we have the adrenaline to help we want to help we want to help and that's a great thing when you want to help but at the same time you have to make sure you are the first priority. It is important, safety first. So the moment you notice the scene is safe, you have established that, and you're gonna go to the person. It's just a quick thing. You go to the person, you say, hey, are you okay, are you okay? You tap on the person like that. It's a, a little vigorous and firm, so to make sure that person is fine. And if the person does not respond, otherwise is the, the person is unresponsive, what you do is, if there is anyone around you, you point to someone if you don't know the person's name. If you happen to be with your friends, you you, you know the person's name. You say, hey, Gene, call 911, something like that. But if you don't know anybody's name, you point to the yellow shirt or red shirt. Call 911. Go get an AED. So that AED is an automated uh, uh, emergency defibrillator that we use. And then actually, you find it everywhere. You go public places. And if you, next time you go out, just look around it, there will be a big sign saying aed and a point to it and you can you you know where it is so that way you tell that person to go get the emergency response device and call for help and that way you know help is on the way and if you you by yourself uh, uh sometimes it happens you go ahead and you call 911 you put the phone on speaker and you start by looking at the person so you look for chest rise you feel with the i'll show you in just a moment how to do that and then you feel for pulse you feel for the heart rate to see if there was any movement and look at the chest to see if it's rising if there's no chest rise and then you notice that person is not responding at all to anything so what is important based on the american uh, heart association guidelines for 2020 they want us to start with chest compressions or cpr which is important and i want you to understand that it is so important to start with that chest compression that's what's gonna circulate blood flow to the body to the brain and uh, until you have the, you have more help so the rate of survival is already low so uh, based on studies over the years they noticed that if you start early uh, with chest compressions you can increase the chance of survival okay guys so this is uh, a demonstration for the adult CPR so right now um, just like we said before it is important to uh, when you um, uh, found someone uh, on the floor, on the ground, uh, of course, check for the scene. And so I'm doing a quick demonstration for you to show you how it works. Um, we're talking about uh, a few things here. I just want to point this out. First, you want to make sure that uh, the scene is safe, just like we did, we talked about earlier. And then you notice the person is laying on the ground, on the floor like that. So you're going to tap on the person vigorously and uh, firmly. Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? This is hard enough to get someone's attention, okay? If you were sleeping and... You know, sometimes some, some, some people, they sleep deep. So that's enough. That's hard enough to get that attention. No response, okay? If there is no response, so the next thing I do, I'm going to call for help. I'm going to shout for help, okay? I'm going to say, help! I need help here! So if I see anyone around, I will tell them to call 911 and bring the AED, okay? Uh, AED, of course, it, it's found uh, at many places. I think it's a requirement now by OSHA to get all these uh, devices 
uh, to get AED uh, in a building in the event there was an emergency for uh, to support the basic life uh, support uh, uh, saving measures. So someone is going to get now uh, to for 911. Someone is going to get the AED. So what I'm going to do next? Uh, I have this. Uh, so the person is there. So I'm going to look at the chest to see if there are any sign of life. If there's any chest rise, so that's what we call sign of life. And if there's any breathing. So there's something it's called coagulated uh, pulse check. So I'm going to check for pulse right here. I'm going to use two fingers. I'm going to go and then slide down. And until I, uh, I, I not, I'm not pressing too hard, but enough to feel if there is any pulse. Okay. If there is no pulse, and I do not do that for uh, a long time. So the American Heart Association, uh, uh, what they said, they recommend that you do it for less than 10 seconds, for about five seconds, or no more than 10 seconds for no more than 10 seconds rather okay you do it for no more than 10 seconds so you check for pulse you look for breathing there's no breathing and then it is important okay to have a uh, 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 rescue uh, uh, mask okay so this is a rescue uh, barrier uh, uh, to help uh, in the event that you, you're gonna start compressions and you're gonna do breathing so when you do compressions you're gonna do 30 compressions followed by two breaths okay you're going to do 30 compressions followed by two breaths. So we talk about the high quality CPR. So the first thing let's talk about is to minimize interruption. So remember I told you, you do not uh, take more than 10 seconds to check for breathing, check for pulse. So that's minimizing interruption. So if someone is coming to help you, you don't take forever to start. Okay, make sure you keep that under control. Second is to provide uh, uh, compressions at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Okay, so if I'm doing compressions, so I'm doing 30 and uh, compressions and two breaths, so it's, a, it's about 15 seconds I take to do 30 compressions. Okay, and I'm gonna demonstrate to you how you do that. So you do a rate of 100 to 120 uh, uh, compressions per minute. And the next thing you do to minimize uh, I and mean, to help with high quality CPR is to making sure that you do proper placement of your hand. So, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna open the chest. Make sure you open, uh, you open the clothing. Uh, uh, if that person was found on the on the water, make sure you you walk uh, around the chest a little bit. Okay. So what you do, the best way to place your hand is to find some landmark. Okay. Landmark is you you go in the middle of the chest. Okay. That's the middle of the chest right there. And then if uh, around uh, in the middle of the you kind of like the use the nipple line. But sometimes that can be a hard thing depending on the you know because of obesity because of a lot of uh, 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 body uh, uh, reasons for that. So instead of using the nipple lines, you can always use the sternum area right here, just in the middle of the chest, and you put the heel of your hand on top like that, and then you uh, your second hand, you're gonna put it um, on top of the first hand, and you're gonna make sure your knees are touching, are in contact with the body, and you're gonna use your upper body for weight, so you go like this, and then you're gonna do provide the compression. So that's how you do compressions. So I'm gonna go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 30. So, remember I told you about the uh, uh, West Cube breathing mask? So, you're going to have that, of course, if you happen to have that in your pocket. And by the way, these are these are very easy to, to get. You can order a few, and actually, I have plenty I ordered online. You can order them. So, I might be able to. Uh, to uh, to post a link, I'll see if I can put put a link for you to uh, order these, uh, so you can order some rescue, rescue mask, so that way you put it. So making sure when you do the breathing, the two breaths, you're gonna place the rescue mask. And it is important because of COVID these days, of course, remember I told you safety first, and that includes with, uh, with COVID these days, okay? So 
you're gonna provide that you have a it's up to you to feel if you how you feel about it the american heart does not recommend you or does not force you to do rescue breathing because of covid but if you have a one way valve uh if you can see on my rescue uh uh, uh valve barrier i have a one way valve that means when i blow in i can only blow in i will not get anything back okay so that's one thing that's very uh, reassuring to, uh, to know to know so you can use that so when you're doing uh, rescue breaths, okay? So if that's your loved ones, okay? If that's ha it happens at home, that was your family members, okay? You can do math to math. It's how you feel about it, okay? But uh, uh, very important, if you have the, if that's someone you don't know, and then you can do, you have the uh, one-way valve, uh, rescue valve, uh, so you can do that. So the best way to do it is to do head uh, uh, tilt, tilt the head, and then uh, you lift the chain, okay? So if that someone was in a car accident, so what we talk about, if that someone who was in a car accident, and then you notice a lot of bleeding around, so you may be, there may be a concern about uh, you break, you don't want to break the neck, so you don't want to cause any more tr trouble. So instead of instead of doing the uh, head tail, you just do the uh, jaw thrust. So you just lift that, uh, you just uh, put your hands like this, and you just thrust uh, uh, the jaw instead of the uh, head tail, okay? That's the only reason, but... If that's at home, no trauma, no sign of trauma, no problem. So you do that. So you put the mask on the face. You pinch the nose a little bit. So you, what you're looking for, you're going to look for chest wise. So I'm going to leave deliver two breasts, okay? I'm going to go like this. And then I wait for one more second. I do one more. And then I immediately go back to do uh, 30 compressions. I'm going to do 30 compressions followed by two breasts. 30 compressions followed by two breaths. This is very tiring, I'll tell you. Uh, so, you know, uh, that's why we call for help. We hope that help arrives. Uh, so, uh, now I have some help. Okay, let's just say I have uh, Oliver here with me. Come here, come here. And you want to say hello, Oliver? Hello, guys. All right, so I have Oliver here for me. So, he just got here. He brought the AED, which, by the way, I'll be telling you about AED. Uh, I'll have a tutorial for you uh, uh, on the next video. I'll tell you, I'll show you how to use the AED. Very simple, but I'll show you how to do that, okay? So, Oliver just got here. I am tired already. So, he's going to take over. So, he's going to perform chest compressions. Now, it's two rescuers. It's two of us. I'll still do the breast, uh, the provide two breasts, and, but he can uh, do compression. So, I want you Oliver to get close uh, to make sure your knees are touching the uh, in contact with his body okay. and I want you to place your hand the landmark is to go in the middle put the uh, heel of your hand like this and then put the second hand on top of it lean forward a little bit and I want you to give 30 compressions you ready yeah. all right so I want you to count on, please one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I will now deliver two breasts. You see chest wise? Yes. Okay. So. Now we did the uh, 30 compressions, two breaths. So we're gonna repeat that until we get help there. So keep that in mind. So uh, the American Heart Association does not uh, uh, talk about how old you have to be in order for you to learn how to do this. So that's why my goal is to, uh, I teach everybody. I go to, I talk about uh, about this with family members and uh, children. And as long as they can perform chest compressions. Uh, physically, they are able to perform chest compressions. They understand what they're doing. So we, we, we tell them what to do. So in addition to minimizing your the interruptions and then to make sure you place your hand. So when we do compressions, you can see Oliver when he was doing that earlier. He put his hand in the middle, he's doing that. So you want to do it a weight of 100 to 120. In addition to that, you want to make sure you don't take your hands off the chest. You, left, you leave your hands in contact every time you do the breast. You do one, you see? Two and I allow the chest to recall. Okay, so that helps with the circulations and um, other things that we do in order for us to deliver high quality CPR. We talk about uh, when we push hard and fast. We do it uh, at the depth of uh, two inches or about five centimeter. Okay, so if that's a big person, sometimes it it can require a little bit more. Uh, uh, 
force okay but you you provide a good quality cpr and that's what's gonna help with the survival rate okay and the next thing we do in addition to high quality cpr is to make sure when you deliver the breast you see chest rise okay they are adequate okay and then you do it for uh, you do one breast and then wait one second and deliver the next breath so it is important to pay attention to that and i hope you guys enjoy this as how much i have enjoyed um uh, sharing that information to you and again if you want to be um, um certified if you want to learn how to do this like i said you can reach out to me and just uh follow uh, uh my information so you can reach out to me and i'll help you and if you don't have any questions any comments please don't uh, hesitate to send me to write to me and send me a comment and i'll respond to you within 24 hours Look, yes, i hope you have learned something today um as i have enjoyed uh sharing that knowledge with you today and we talk about uh safety so you check the scene check around do a quick survey to make sure that the scene is safe and second we talk about how to approach the person so someone is witness uh, falling on the ground someone uh, was found unresponsive you just go tap on the shoulder of the person are you okay are you okay something like that to establish that there was a response if the person is not responding the next thing you do you point to someone or you call someone's name to uh, uh, you call for, you shout for help you call for help by saying hey you call 911 and bring the AED so something like that so you have done that and then you go to the person that you you uh, look for chest wise, you check for pulse to see if the person uh, is breathing, if there was any sign of life, and you have noticed there is no sign of life, so what you do, you proceed with the chest compressions. So we talk about the hand placement, we talk about uh, high quality CPR uh, based on the American Heart Association guidelines for 2020. So you have done that, you have learned all, all of these things, and I hope that you feel like now you're ready, and even there was an emergency, you can be of, a, uh, of assistance, and you keep you can be of a help so it is important and uh, as i said before i make videos every week about uh, i share information about life-saving measures and this is just a beginning uh, of uh, of a series of videos that where i talk about different life-saving measures so on the next video i will be talking about how to use aed and then i will talk about child and infant cpr so uh, if that's something you are interested in, I hope you'll be on the lookout for the next one. So I will be making that video and I will be posting that for you as soon as possible. So it is, uh, just want to, I uh, just want to remind you, this video is not any uh, legal advice. And this is just for educational and entertainment purposes only. So if you have any questions, if you want to learn how to do this to be certified, you can always go to Venel Med Pulse um, and I'll post a link, a link below where you can find that. So you can can always reach out to me as I told you before I'm an instructor I can help you out with that and if that's something you want to be if you want to be a certified a provider so um, it was a pleasure to have you today and I hope again you have learned something and be on the lookout for the next video bye